And the Clippers, Leonard, they're working together to make sure whenever he's back on the floor, he's going to be able to sustain. Getting treatment, he's going through the process. We have his right knee. Kawhi Leonard is expected to be sidelined for the start of this NBA season. I think Kawhi Leonard should consider retiring, but I really do think he might need to consider walking away from the game of basketball. Look away, Clipper fans, because things have just gotten significantly worse for the Los Angeles Clippers as they got some news that, well, they're fairly familiar with. But before we get to the content, we've been making a huge push on Snapchat, bringing you guys exclusive content behind the scenes of how we make our videos, and also some stuff that I might be doing when I'm not making the content. And now that we get all that out, the way you the intro We made $500 on prize picks this past Sunday. And fortunately, a lot of you guys tailed my picks on Instagram and Snapchat. And you guys let me know in my DMs. One of you even made $1,000 from my picks. Prize picks is giving us another free square, meaning we only need to get one pick correct in order to 3X our money. All Anthony Edwards needs to do on opening night is score one point. Fortunately, we've been on a crazy streak. And if you haven't played prize picks, download the app or click in the link in the description down below and use my promo code microphone to get a hundred dollars when you make an entry of five dollars or more then follow me on instagram at the flight mike or on snapchat to get my picks for free and thank you prize picks for the sponsor mike check one two one two what's going on everybody at this point we could all agree the Kawhi leonard paul george era in los angeles has definitely fallen short of expectations and it's primarily due to one reason and one reason in particular because the clippers blew a three to one series lead in the bubble no jokes aside this is something Something that Clipper fans are very, very familiar with. The fact that every single time this team seemed to have had promise, one of their star players, whether it was Paul George or Kawhi Leonard, would get injured at the worst possible time. I mean, the very next year, 2020 to 2021, the Clippers finished fourth in the West, but in the conference finals, Kawhi Leonard got hurt and the Clippers would lose to the eventual Western Conference champion, Phoenix Suns. Which really causes me a lot of pain, man. Even though I'm a Laker fan and I don't want the Clippers to succeed, I just feel like a Clippers Bucks NBA Finals would have been so much more entertaining than what we ended up getting between Phoenix and the Milwaukee Bucks, respectfully. And things would just get worse consistently. I mean, the 2021 to 22 season, Kawhi Leonard would get injured, and the Clippers would lose in the play in to Patrick Beverly, who is looking like a goat in Tel Aviv currently. So shout out to him. And then the 2022 to 23 season, fans were really excited about this iteration of the Clippers because they were able to add Russell Westbrook on a veteran minimum contract. And unfortunately, Russell Westbrook would have to carry the Clippers throughout the first round versus the Phoenix Suns because once again, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard would suffer from injuries. Now, despite this going on, the Clippers decided to not only double down on the fact that they want virtually no assets until the 2030 NBA season by trading for James Harden. But in addition to this, after building this crazy super team with James Harden, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and Russell Westbrook, they decided to extend Kawhi Leonard in the middle of January. And this was probably the most surprising part of all because these two moves completely crippled the Los Angeles Clippers moving forward. And I still can't wrap my head around why they did this because Kawhi Leonard has been able to play over 50 games throughout his Los Angeles Clippers tenure. It just seems like whenever it came time for some meaningful games, he just wasn't able to make it. To give you an idea, throughout the four seasons that Kawhi Leonard has played for the Los Los Angeles Clippers, he's played 28 playoff games. And in his lone season with the Toronto Raptors, he's played 24 playoff games. So I would expect the Los Angeles Clippers to kind of use this as a leverage whenever they wanted to sign Kawhi Leonard to a contract extension, considering the fact that they also needed to sign James Harden to a contract extension, and considering the fact that they would ideally retain Paul George. You know, the player that was more active in the postseason than Kawhi Leonard was? Say what you want about Paul George coming 
putting up short and clutch situations, but Paul George has played in 38 playoff games for the Los Angeles Clippers. So I could only imagine how he felt when Kawhi Leonard was signed to a three-year $152.4 million contract extension, and then the Clippers came up to Paul George and said, hey, we want you to take a pay cut. There's no question about it. Kawhi Leonard is definitely the top dog on the Los Angeles Clippers, but he just hasn't been durable during the most important times for the Clippers, and that has been the most frustrating part. Because in the past, when the Clippers were fully healthy, they've been one of the most dominant teams in the West. Well, the problem is, is they're rarely fully healthy, but they check off all the other boxes. They had plenty of depth last year. They have tremendous coaching in the form of Tyron Liu. They had two of the best two-way stars in the NBA. They had one of the best playmakers in the NBA in James Harden. And as a bonus, they had Russell Westbrook coming off of the bench. And during the offseason, they got considerably worse. And I could sit here and rant over and over and over again about how dumb of a move it was to let Paul George walk to the Philadelphia 76ers for free as opposed to trading him to the Warriors. I mean, there were other free agency moves and Paul George is the biggest of the summer. He is planning to sign a four-year deal with the 76ers. Also a little salty about that because Paul George was going to come to the Warriors and we wanted Paul George to come to the Warriors. For us to get Paul George, it would have taken a sign and trade and the Clippers didn't really want to play ball. Um, didn't really want to help him get to where he wanted to go. And so in turn, they get nothing back. And, you know, whereas you could have gotten something back for Paul George walking, they get absolutely nothing back. So that didn't quite pan out for us, which would have been nice. Primarily because when you're a team that has no assets at all, then you should try to get at least something in return for your departing stars. That's how you're able to get away with taking these types of risks. I poked a lot of fun at the Brooklyn Nets during the Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant era. And say what you want about the Brooklyn Nets, but at least the Brooklyn Nets were able to turn Kevin Durant into seven first round picks and were able to get their draft picks back. At least the team has a future, as opposed to the Clippers where it really doesn't seem like they're there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel for them. So the strategy originally coming into this season, now that the Clippers lost Paul George to the Philadelphia 76ers, was to obviously retain James Harden, which I'll admit, I think James Harden has a pretty good contract for the Los Angeles Clippers. Two years, $70 million. That's way below the max. And at least they got James Harden to agree to that. They also brought back Nicholas Batum. They signed Derek Jones Jr. They brought in Chris Dunn. And they took some swings on Kevin Porter Jr., Mo Bamba, and Kai Jones. They weren't able to do much in the NBA draft because while well, they didn't have their draft pick this year. And the strategy is clear. Let James Harden run the Los Angeles Clippers as if he was still playing for the Houston Rockets. James Harden has been trying to hype up the Clippers saying he's the system. The game and I'm a creator on the court. You know what I mean? So if I got a, a, a voice to where I can, hey coach, I see this. You know what you think about this? Then it's like, oh, okay. Like somebody that trusts me, that believes in me, that understands me, that I'm just not a, you know, my. I'm not a system player, I am a system. You know what I mean? So, um. And more recently, he's been saying that he's in the best shape of his life. Start of the season, I'm gonna be probably, not probably the best shape I've been in probably about five, six, seven years. So, uh, I don't really wanna talk. I just wanna go out there and, and show it. I've been, I feel like I've been talking too much. Um, and he's even admitted to us straight up that he has way more influence on the offense. The earlier you get started, and we're for the most part a fairly new team, you know what I mean? So you got teams that's been together, especially their core for, you know, five, six, seven years. You see Boston, they've been together for a very long time, and they finally got their first championship. So team building chemistry is very, very important. And for me, I think we had a, a wonderful a training camp in Scottsdale, which we had a couple weeks ago just to kind of get the guy hanging out, go to dinners and things like that. So this is very important. You kind of away from your family, you get to just work out and then hang out, just chat and, and, and get to know each other. That's, that helps with the court as well. So. Meanwhile, Kawhi Leonard said that his mindset hasn't changed with Paul George leaving. Don't let that distract you from the major problem that the Los Angeles Clippers have had throughout the Kawhi Leonard era. And that's the fact that he's just not available to play. Remember, Kawhi Leonard injured his knee in April. Back then, he was supposed to be day to day. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there was a time where Los Angeles Clipper fans thought that Kawhi Leonard was going to make it back in time for the
the playoff, but alas, he didn't. There was a point a couple of months later where Kawhi Leonard said, Hey, I want to represent Team USA in the Olympics. For Lawrence Frank and the coaching staff said, No, you don't. What are you doing? You barely can stay healthy as is. So you would imagine if Kawhi Leonard was trying to play for Team USA's Olympic team, then there'd be no question about it. He is fully good to go for the start of the regular season. After all, that's why the Los Angeles Clippers were all in. Well, we're all in until this past off season where they just decided not to go past the second apron and extend Paul George, which is a crazy switch up if you think about it. But we've discussed this many times before. They're opening up a brand new arena into a dome. They're no longer the Los Angeles Lakers little brother. They're the Los Angeles Clippers and they have their own identity now. So it's important that their best player would be available for that game. And originally we thought it was a no brainer. There was no question about it that Kawhi Leonard would be available for the beginning of the season. But then Tyron Lue would say this a couple weeks ago. What's your latest update on Kawhi Leonard? He's getting treatment, he's going through the process. We have his right knee. Hey Derek, is so, uh, still nothing in practice right now. Huh? Still nothing in practice. Kawhi? Yeah. No. And then Brian Shaw would say this two days ago. We're out here, you know, um, he has not been a part of what we've been doing. Um, on a daily basis, so I know the kind of company line has been that he's going to, you know, we're going to be patient with him, um, so he's doing everything that he can to rehab and strengthen that knee uh, on his own with, uh, with our medical staff and we're just dealing with the guys that we have today. today he and now, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please, because Shams Charania would appear on ESPN and say this. Malika, sources tell me that Kawhi Leonard is expected to be sidelined for the start of this NBA season starting next week. He's continuing to rehab inflammation in his right knee, going through a rehab process with the Clippers to strengthen that knee. I'm told he is still in that protocol, that process. And the Clippers, Leonard, they're working together to make sure whenever he's back on the floor, he's going to be able to sustain and stay on the court and that they're doing their due diligence and not just bringing him back for the start of the season or rushing him back for a week. But for Kawhi Leonard, this has been something since last spring, really, yeah. where it's been a process. He just has not felt right. He's been dealing with swelling in that knee, continued swelling. He's still had and developed over the course of this training camp. So he will be out a period of time to start the NBA season. Still unclear exactly when, but the, the players, coaches, they are bracing for him to be out a period of time to start the year. So this wasn't part of the Los Angeles Clippers plan at all. He's currently out indefinitely. And Shams even mentions this in the article that he wrote about him. Now, I will be honest, I still feel fairly confident that the Clippers could at least tread water while they're waiting for Kawhi Leonard to return. I mean, it's not like the Clippers are devoid of depth. James Harden was able to do a remarkable job making a relatively thin supporting cast looked pretty damn good when he was on the Houston Rockets. But that was Houston Rockets' James Harden. Harden will have Norman Powell, Ivica Zubak, and Terrence Mann flanking him. And for all you know, we might even see him turn back the clock, and that's definitely a possibility. It's just not something that I would necessarily want to depend on if I'm the Los Angeles Clippers. At the end of the day, I just think it's crazy that the Clippers decided to pay Kawhi Leonard a full-on max contract in January, given the fact that he's consistently been injured when it's mattered the most. And I think that just speaks to the incompetence of the Los Angeles Clippers front office. I mean, you trade a bunch of assets for Paul George in 2019, and then you trade a bunch of assets for James Harden in the beginning of 2023. You decide to then give Kawhi Leonard a fully max contract when you could have just signed him for $10 million less. And that combined with the pay cut that James Harden would have given you would have been more than enough to retain Paul George or at least go into the second apron because at this point you might as well it's not like you have assets for the future anyway and you're opening up a brand new arena fans need to get excited about this iteration of the Clippers and of course you can't really predict when injuries happen but this literally happens each and every year Kawhi Leonard rarely plays for the Clippers it's a meme at this point no one is shocked by this news there's a reason why I titled the videos Kawhi Leonard did it again because we already know what he did again. At the end of the day, I know I'm a Laker fan, but I obviously want each and every superstar in the NBA to be fully healthy so we can watch these teams at full strength. But I have to admit, I feel like this could have been avoided. I feel like the Clippers could have handled this situation better. But let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about all this. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.